Jimmy Fallon welcomes Ryan Gosling, NBC Tonight. We never know what we're stepping into. We have multiple victims. He's not breathing. Ready for water. We have minutes to save his life. So, Simon, your top 15 most memorable auditions. I couldn't lose one of the acts. We've changed it to top 16. Right now at 11, her cry for help, just two simple words scribbled on a piece of paper. But it's those words that may have saved her life. Tonight, a cross-country kidnapping case cracked at a Long Beach laundromat. Good evening, everyone. I'm Carolyn Johnson. Colleen is off tonight. That rescue happened after three days on the run with the kidnapper. Now the 13-year-old is safe, and the suspect is facing federal charges. NBC4's Darsha Phillips live in Long Beach for us with reaction from witnesses. Darsha. Hey there, Carolyn. Yeah, that rescue happened in this parking lot in Long Beach back on July 9th. And Long Beach police crediting the act of a good Samaritan and the little girl who did what she could to get help. Scribbled on paper in red letters, this sign held by a 13-year-old girl inside a car in the parking lot of the Easy Wash laundromat caught the attention of exactly the right person. She's my customer. She always come wash here. She told me that. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a girl in need help. Touch Vong says her customer went back outside and called 911. The man who police say kidnapped the girl was in the laundromat doing laundry. Touch says he brought the girl inside at one point that morning. But she's scared. She got red hair, short hair, like this, this, this much. And Touch says she got a bad feeling when she saw the man the girl was with. A scary face. Yeah, he looked up down to me. I said, in my head, I said, oh, maybe something, something, yeah. After the customer called police, officers arrested him, identifying him as 61-year-old Stephen Robert Sablon of Claiborne, Texas. According to a federal indictment, the girl was walking in San Antonio on July 6th when she was approached by a man in a silver Nissan vehicle. The driver of the vehicle, later identified as Sablon, raised a black handgun and told her, if you don't get in the car with me, I'm going to hurt you. The indictment says Sablon drove the 13-year-old from San Antonio to Long Beach, sexually assaulting her several times along the way. When the Good Samaritan called 911, responding officers found a black BB gun and handcuffs in the car. Long Beach Police credit the rescue to the quick action of the Good Samaritan. Touch says she is so thankful her customer called police. I shock, but I have to be for call the police here. I risk you her same time. Sablon is behind bars tonight. He is expected to be arraigned on Monday, July 31st. Reporting live from Long Beach tonight, I'm Darsha Phillips, NBC4 News. Darsha, thank you. Well, a fiery school board meeting in Chino. School board members just passed a new policy that forces teachers to tell parents if their child identifies as transgender. At one point, that meeting got so chaotic, police officers had to be called in. NBC4's Robert Kavasik is in Chino now with what went down. Robert. Carolyn, it was chaotic. There were hundreds of people here adamant about getting their point across. There were signs, there were t-shirts, there were speeches. And yes, security was called, but not to clear the crowd that had gotten out of control, but it was California's highest ranking educator who had to be led away. Tony Thurman, I appreciate you being here tremendously, but here's the problem. We're here because of people like you. You're in Sacramento <laughs> proposing things that pervert children. And with those words from the Chino Hills Unified School Board President, California's State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Thurman, was escorted by police out of the meeting with some parents shouting, leave our kids alone. Outside the meeting, Thurman said the kids are wise here. I came here today because I was called uh, by many students in this district who shared with me that they've been threatened, they've been bullied, they've been intimidated, on social media, in the boardroom, 
and that they feel threatened by this policy that is here. At issue, should parents be notified if their child identifies as transgender at school, is involved in violence, or talks about suicide? Teachers aren't trying to.